This module is titled Development of Postural Control. Prior to completing this module, please complete the readings outlined in the course schedule. They are also listed here. Upon completion of this module, you should understand how sensory, motor, and musculoskeletal systems interact to promote postural stability and the development of postural reactions, or milestones, of postural control. Postural control is one of the most important components in the development of movement. The emergence of skills requires development of postural activity to support the primary movement. In other words, postural control provides the foundation on which other movements and more distal skills develop. For young infants, the immature postural system is a limiting factor on the emergence of other behaviors and the inhibition of reflexes. Primitive reflexes may not integrate and more mature behaviors may not appear until the infant develops postural control. In fact, poor postural control can actually mask more mature distal skills such as reaching, eye and head control, and leg movements. It can appear that a baby is unable to reach when, in fact, the true problem is a lack of postural control. Once the baby gains better postural skills, or we provide the baby with external postural support using our hands or a supportive seat, she may then be able to reach. When we provide external support to young or developmentally delayed babies, we may see more mature behaviors emerge. Indeed, proximal stability allows for distal mobility. This figure illustrates a young baby with immature postural control. First, look at figure A. When we hold the baby with very little support, the baby is unable to steady his head and body. He may feel like he is falling, triggering the Moreau reflex. A component of the Moreau reflex is a startle, so this baby may continue to startle repeatedly as he feels he's falling in space. The baby in figure A is unable to visually attend to a toy or caregiver and is unable to attempt to reach or voluntarily move his arms and legs. He's struggling just to remain upright and is not able to focus or learn. Now look at figure B. In this figure, the caregiver is providing neck and trunk support, effectively compensating for the lack of postural control. We see that the baby is much more relaxed in this figure. He is now able to look at the caregiver and may even attempt to move his arms and legs or reach voluntarily. The baby in figure A is fighting just to control his body in space, while baby B is able to focus, interact, and learn. If we were to encounter this baby in practice, uh, we would want to help this baby develop better postural control, but also provide external postural, postural control for the baby as shown in figure B so that he could develop other attention and more fine motor skills in a seated or upright position. Postural control develops through a complex interaction of various subsystems as shown in this figure. These subsystems can be more broadly categorized into three primary systems, sensory, motor, and musculoskeletal. The three sensory subsystems involved in postural development are visual, vestibular, and somatosensory. These three subsystems work together and can compensate for each other. The visual system provides feedback correction and feed forward or anticipatory control. It is the most powerful sense in early postural development. Infants who are learning to move rely heavily on visual vision for postural stability and continue to rely on vision through the first few years of life. The vestibular system regulates head control and references gravitational forces. This is the system that tells, us or tells our body where up is and tries to keep our head upright in relation to gravity. The somatosensory system provides information on body positioning and writing. This system gives us information needed to keep our body segments in line with one another. It gives our body information on where it is in space in relation to other parts of our body. The motor systems provide organized muscle activity to help achieve postural control. This organized muscle activity can be broadly categorized as either reactive or anticipatory postural adjustments. Reactive postural adjustments, or RPAs, are appropriate muscle responses to perturbation. 
For example, if someone throws a ball at you unexpectedly while you're not looking, the ball may hit your body and throw you off balance. The organized muscle response your body uses to keep you upright would be an RPA. Anticipatory postural adjustments, or APAs, are cognitive processes for predicting postural requirements and selecting timely anticipatory motor strategies. If you're expecting that the ball is going to be thrown at you, your body produces an organized muscle response to prepare for catching the ball so that it doesn't throw you off balance when, you're, when it hits your body. Your body is anticipating what it needs to do to stay upright. APAs are learned and require cognitive processing. Thus, individuals with cognitive deficits, difficulty learning, or children who have limited motor experiences may not demonstrate APAs. If you had never had a ball thrown at you or couldn't remember what happens when a ball hits your body, you would not demonstrate APAs and would then have to rely on RPAs after the fact in order to stay upright. RPAs are a response that help you correct when you're already falling, while APAs are a prediction you make to help keep you from falling in the first place. The musculoskeletal systems also influence postural development. Strength is an important factor in the development of posture. Even if a child has sensory systems intact and attempts to recruit muscles for RPAs or APAs, he will be unsuccessful if he does not have sufficient strength to keep his body upright. Anthropometrics play a critical role in postural development for children, particularly in the first year of life. In infants and young children, the head is large relative to the body. This effectively raises the center of mass of the young child, making her less stable in an upright position. When infants learn to sit, stand, and walk, they must overcome the challenge of balancing their large head within their small base of support. The size of the head also raises the center of mass of the child, making her even more stable, more unstable. Thus, infants with larger heads and those who are taller often tend to walk a bit later than infants with smaller heads and bodies, simply because the babies with larger heads and bodies have to do more work to keep themselves upright. This figure presents a systems view of postural development. When all the systems and subsystems come together, we see postural development occur very rapidly in the first two years of life with continued development through approximately seven years. By age seven to 10, postural control looks very adult-like and is mature. Postural control begins to develop at two to three months. When, sensory systems, when the sensory system maps to the neck muscles and the infant gains head control. By six months of age, right in here, these rules for sensing and moving for posture extend to the trunk. This is the age when infants typically gain the ability to sit independently. As the infant approaches one year, the sensory system maps to leg muscles. Babies begin standing and walking using an ankle strategy for correction control. By age three, visual dominance begins to decline and the somatosensory system dominates. In early childhood, children develop active hip control and rely primarily on hip strategies for postural correction. Tables 3-2 and 3-3 in your Campbell text also provide nice, clear descriptions of the development of postural control. The contemporary systems view of postural development presented in the previous slide differs from a more classic reflex hierarchical view. This view of postural control has its roots in neural maturationist theory and describes development as po of postural control as a series of riding equilibrium and protective reactions that emerge as the central nervous system matures. The role of reflexes and reactions in postural development is controversial, but many physical therapists assess postural reaction milestones to determine the maturity of the central nervous system and quantify postural control skills. So while we know that postural control has to do with a lot more than just reflexes, reactions, and the development of the central nervous system, this is still something important for the physical therapist to understand. And we can see that these postural control milestones that we often look at in physical therapy are 
highlighted in this figure. Postural reactions can be categorized into three types. Writing reactions keep the body in line with itself. Writing reactions can be vertical, orienting the head to an upright position, or rotational, restoring body parts to normal alignment following rotation. Equilibrium reactions can refer to tilting reactions in which the body works to remain upright on an unstable base of support. An example would be when a child may be sitting or standing on a rocker board or a therapy ball. The surface is moving underneath the child and the child is producing a response to stay upright. Postural fixation reactions keep the body upright on a stable base of support and occur when the child is pushed or bumped. So in this example, postural fixation reactions occur when the child is actually moving over the surface. When writing and equilibrium reactions fail and the child loses her balance, protective reactions kick in. Protective reactions describe extension movements of the extremities in the same direction as a force that shifts the body's center of gravity outside the base of support. In other words, this is when a child catches herself with her hands when she falls. I've created a playlist in YouTube of postural control videos and we're going to view one here. This is a short video that is an infant about six months of age so he's sitting independently with some guarding and we're going to see some of his postural control reactions here. So we see that he's sitting independently, and when the examiner begins to tilt him, we can see those, those writing reactions kick in. We can see the head and trunk attempt to come upright. There we see a protective reaction where he catches himself with his hands when he's tipped to the side. This figure also illustrates reflexes and reaction that occur in the development of postural control. Again, we can see uh, in figure A, we see primitive reactions, primitive reflexes. Those are here. In figure B, we see, whoops, we see head riding reactions or vertical riding where the head tries to stay upright. And then down here in figure C, we see rotational writing, which occurs when we actually rotate the head or body segment of the baby. And he attempts to rotate the rest of his body in response. In figure D, we see tilting reactions. So the surface, the baby's on a tilt board, the surface is moving underneath him. And then finally at the bottom in figure E, we see protective reactions in the order that they emerge, forward, sideways, and backwards. I've posted a handout for you to review, and we'll also discuss these reactions further in class. This concludes the lecture on modal de motor developmental theories and principles. Once again, I'll leave you with a video of a laughing baby. In this one minute video, you can see this baby demonstrate a variety of postural control strategies and reactions to keep himself from falling over. Eventually though, his cat is so funny that he can no longer maintain his postural control. A perfect illustration of how the environment does indeed impact motor skill. Enjoy. <laughs> You're a silly boy.
<laughs> Where'd she go? Where'd she go? Ha, 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 ha.